everyone welcome back to the channel uh today's video i'm obviously in a new location you get to see my living room now instead of my desk space and my dog decided to join me for this today's video i am going to be giving you a little bit more of a personal story with a dash of advice and maybe some wisdom sharing about my experience through choosing a thesis advisor. Alright, so this is going to be really exciting because we are going to be going on this journey together. This video is going to be all about the beginning of this journey for me choosing a lab to work in. I have not chosen one yet. Um, I'm going to go on and go through the process up until now. And I want to take you through this journey with me. I really want to say that this is a work in process. I know that there are going to be hiccups along the way. I am planning on sharing all of this with you so that you can see my account of exactly how this process is for me. And I'm really excited to be able to be to, uh, filming this as it happens and not really like looking back on it, but as it happens, my first reactions to it. Um, and I hope that you are excited about it and that you are interested in it. So my experience with PhD graduate programs and um, primary investigators or PIs thus far has been that when I went to apply for programs, I looked at the research that was being done in the department that I was applying for. I did look at some specific PIs. I kind of delved more into their research topics, ones that I thought I was kind of interested in. And for me, I was just really making sure that there were some areas of interest that I had that aligned with the program. I wanted to make sure that I would be able to find something of interest for me, something of interest for me to work with. I did know that that was a very important part of the process of getting your PhD. Um, what I didn't know at the time and didn't do was I did not email any PIs specifically to ask them about working with them or to ask them about the program or anything. I was kind of just doing my research on the side I know now that it can actually be encouraged to email PIs you're interested in to start that dialogue. You can let them know you're applying. Sometimes uh, in the application process, they want you to already have that dialogue. So that is something to definitely think about. For me, not doing that didn't affect me getting accepted. I still got accepted into the programs. Um, and then that's when the real process of finding my thesis advisor has really began. Part of my program is that it's very important to make sure that the PI that you are going to work with has funding to support you through your years of a PhD. My program is designed to be about on average five years. The first two years can be funded through working as a TA or a teacher's assistant. Um, and then the last three years primarily are supposed to be funded through being a research assistant in the lab uh, that you're going to be working in for your thesis. And this is why it's really important that you make sure whose lab you're working in has funding to support your research assistantship. To this end, my program provided us with an Excel document of all the current PIs who had funding secured and who were looking to accept new students. This was a great resource because then you already knew they were looking for students and it, uh, you didn't have to have that super uncomfortable conversation of I really like your research but do you have enough money to take me on? They did say and encourage us if there was a specific PI that we had already looked up that wasn't on the list we could still contact them, still talk to them about their research ask them if they had funding or potential funding because we do have the two years of uh, TA first so they might have funding so that was definitely something they encouraged us to do they just kind of gave us a stepping stone with the document of already funded PIs which for me was great 
Anyways, it was our responsibility to then reach out to these PIs and set up communication and dialogue with them. This part has been a pretty straightforward process for me. My program is designed so that the first year you complete two or three lab rotations in different labs to get to know the research that's being done and the lab environment and to get a feel for the PIs as how they would be for as an advisor. Um, because you're going to be spending a lot of time in this lab that you choose for your thesis. As I was emailing these professors, I was really nervous. I'm going to be honest. Um, but I kept my emails short and to the point. I just stated that I had interest in completing a lab rotation in their lab, asked if they would have time to meet with me um, or speak with me. Something I did not realize to do at the time, I wasn't really thinking, um, I did not include my CV with those first initial emails. This, a couple, um, one of the PIs had access to my application, so she got my CV from that. The other two did end up emailing me back and asking for my CV, uh, which it just would have saved some time and it just would have been like thoughtful to include my CV in the first email. So learn from me, send your CV in the first email. Um, let them know you've attached it so they can look at it because they want to get to know you a little bit through your CV to see if you would be a good match for the lab also. So I heard back from my first PI really rather quickly and we set up a Zoom meeting and I was once again really nervous. I had no idea what to expect. Um, I, I, I kind of knew we'd be talking about her research. She might ask me about my research interests, but I was like, uh, kind of deer in the headlights, trying to think of everything, which I will say I didn't, ended up, I should not have been that nervous. It was fine. It was great. The PI actually made me feel so comfortable. She had a, present a short presentation about the current research being done in their lab. And she spoke to me about the lab culture. I, I kind of let her know that this was my first time speaking with anybody. And she was so gracious about it and gave me other things that I could I mean, should consider for the lab, like the lab environment, the mentorship style, getting along with the other people in the lab, and of course their research, but just other things I hadn't considered. She kind of talked to me about, which was really helpful. Also, um, something that was really nice is she made it more personal. She talked to me about more personal things when I told her I was moving. She recommended some areas to move to. We talked about kids and she recommended schools for me. So making it like that personal really felt good. I'm going to be honest with you, being a mom entering a PhD program is a little scary. Uh, it's one of those things that's like, how are people going to perceive you? And she just like, didn't even make it seem like a big deal, I guess, is the only way I can think of to tell it. And so that just encouraged me so much more. Uh, my second experience was also a Zoom meeting. This time I came into it a little bit more comfortable. I kind of knew what I wanted to ask about the lab environment. We talked about the research again. Um, we talked about the lab environment and in reality, all three of the PIs that I spoke with and then set up lab rotations with were really great about answering questions, kind of having things prepared to talk about. <clears throat> there are different aspects about each lab that are things I already know I'm going to be thinking about as I work in the labs beyond the research. Uh, for example, with this group, one of the PIs is new to the university, um, more recently out of her postdoc. So I'm assuming that this, and well, it'll just affect the feel of the lab. It'll be a little bit different compared to another PI who's been 
with a specific university for a long time, has a larger lab. Um, the first one that's just getting started, it's, I know there's going to be less students. It's me and one other master's student entering this fall who are going to be starting together in the fall. Um, so just those different types of environments. To be honest, I'm really excited to see those. I don't know which one's going to be a better fit for me. So experiencing them is going to be really important. Also, the third lab, interestingly, is more of a collaborative lab. The PI works with several other PIs in a collaborative situation. And the PI that I have talked about working with it also has a joint appointment outside of biological sciences department, which is the department I'm in. And I'm really excited about the collaborative environment because my experience with forensic science is just shown me how much collaboration in science is important and exciting. So that is a completely different experience that I'm really excited for also. So I have thought a lot about how these different environments could affect my experience getting my PhD. And I've also tried in the abstract to think about oh, which environment is going to be the best fit for me. And it's really hard to like think about. I, I do have a little bit of experience in a research lab, um, being that I did a master's research project, but is a little bit different because the department was rather small compared to this department. So it's just a little bit different that way. Also, the amount of time I will spend in this lab is significantly greater. So like, it's not something I can just survive for a semester if I don't like it. Like, I'm gonna be there for a long time and it's really important. I've also read a lot of stories online uh, recently about how having a bad PI or a bad lab environment can really negatively impact an experience and I'm trying not to let those things freak me out, but it's something that I wanna take into consideration, um, right? I want to make sure that not only am I going to enjoy the research that I'm doing, but I'm also going to enjoy the environment I'm doing that research in. Part of this for me has been uh, interesting because I don't really have one specific area of interest that I am most interested in dying to work in. Uh, in some ways it's made it harder for me because in all of these Zoom meetings, they of course ask you what your areas of interest are. And that's part of, because they want to make sure that you're going to be a good fit for the lab too, right? They're trying to, you're trying to fit from both sides. Um, for me, unfortunately, it's been a really hard question to answer because I'm trying to like get out of my master's project, which was so specific and enter this new phase where I'm trying to explore these other areas of interest that I have, but they're kind of more vague right now. And the more I try to like dive into like, see what they are specifically, the more difficult it's become for me, which is part of the reason why this program having lab rotations is really important for me because I'm going to be able to see firsthand how I feel about the research before I have to choose a lab to work in. And this is going to be something that I, I need. But for me, on the other hand, not having like this specific research that I want to research means that I can prioritize the lab environment almost just as much as the research. Uh, for example, if Two, two of the lab's researches are a little bit more interesting to me currently, like on the paper level, reading the papers. I'm a little bit more interested in them than the third. I still have interest in the third, which is why I still decided to go through with the lab rotation with them. And I'm gonna be honest, if that third lab has the best lab environment that I feel is going to be the most supportive, and while I'm doing the lab rotation, the research is still interesting. I might go with that lab because lab environment is really important to me. As I already mentioned, being a mom, I really want to find the lab that's going to support me. 
And I know that there's people out there that have other circumstances that they may need support too. So I, I just want to encourage people to like find that support. I don't want anybody to work in like a toxic environment. I don't want to work in a toxic environment. So the whole process has been a balancing act of enough interest in the research to keep me motivated for years of doing research, diving deep into this research, while also still being in that really supportive lab environment with people that I can work with and people I can enjoy my time with. Where I'm at right now, I am really excited to just get started. I have spent so much time analyzing this decision that I'm going to have to make in the abstract of trying to think about the research and predict the lab environments. And I'm just excited to get started in my first lab rotation so that I can dive into the research and I can see firsthand how the lab environment is. And I'm hoping that kind of can halt my speculation. That's a problem I have. I'm just always thinking about the million possibilities. What if? Um, so I'm really excited to get started in my first lab. Um, my first uh, lab advisor has sent me some articles to read specific to the research. That is one thing I will say. Uh, she emailed me for like to let me know how things were going and ask if I had any questions. I did ask her if she had these articles to send me because I have a little bit of extra time now that I'm definitely not going to have in three weeks when we start. Uh, even though my little bit of extra time is dwindling the more tasks I get. But I have a little bit of extra time and I want to go into this prepared. I want to go into this with like a foundation so that maybe even the first day when I'm in the lab, I'm not like, what is going on here? Like I don't want to be that student. I want to know I mean, at least the basic, at least kind of the background. Also, this way, when I go in that first day, if I have questions right off the bat, I can ask them. Um, so my first, this experience with her has been great. She's been keeping in touch with me, keeping in contact with me, and like giving me these resources is amazing. So I'm just really excited to get started. Uh, I'm sorry if this video became a rambly kind of long-winded story sometimes I like to talk but honestly that's what these videos are probably gonna be because like I said I'm taking you through the process and you are getting a glimpse into my thoughts which are sometimes all over the place so if you like these videos if you like to see this real-life process please click subscribe like this video. I would love if you would join me on this journey and comment, engage. I would love to get to know you and thanks for coming on another video. Bye.